Hey guys, it's DJ here with a spellbook deck tech for the new format. I guess it's not so much the new format anymore as the current one, but that's not really the point. Uh, what I'm trying to do right now that I didn't really explain in the Firefist video is go over all the uh, decks I perceive as the top decks this format, so you guys can get a little bit of a starting idea of what the format will look like, what the decks will look like, and maybe how to build the decks for your own like testing gauntlet or something if you want to play test more. I think if you can kind of visualize the format, it'll help you improve yourself a lot as a player. So I wanted to go through all the top decks at the very start of the format to help you guys out before I started posting silly decks or matches or anything like that, since I think understanding the decks is key to understanding the format. Uh, anyway, Spellbooks is a deck I've obviously talked about a lot before, so sorry to bore you by saying a lot of the same things again. But uh, let's just get through this. Play three Spellbook Magician. Um, it searches... Pretty much any useful card in your deck. Not much more to say than that. Three Temperance of Prophecy. Uh, this is, I mean, where most of your power comes from. This card lets you special summon World of Prophecy and High Priestess. Uh, we're playing two worlds, which is sort of stupid at first glance. Uh, you're going to say, well, you're going to open world more then. But the part about opening world that sucks the most is not having one left in your deck. Not really having it stuck in your hand. The extra deck cards don't really matter if you can just summon another world. And it also helped with uh, cards like Bottomless and things, if your world gets removed, being able to recycle it with life repeatedly, which is, you can't lose if you're summoning worlds. Like, it just won't happen. The card's insane. It's the most unfair thing you can do in this deck. Um, and a lot of people are really focusing deck, their deck around summoning world now, to the point where some people are playing things like Foolish Burial uh, and Stoic of Prophecy, plus more discard traps. I think the Stoic line's not very good. Uh, instead, I'm playing three Upstart Goblins, and I'm playing three Reckless Greeds, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, after Upstart Godland, get to some of the spell books. Three Secrets, just like Magician, searches pretty much any useful card in your deck, including Magician, so it also can get you a creature to compensate for your little creature count. Uh, three Crescents, you sort of just need spell books. This card's really insane anyway, but in general, you need to play more spell book cards to summon things like Priestess, get things like World's Effect off, or uh, activate Temperance, as well as to fill your graveyard for a spell book of fit. Um, two spell book of the master the card I really wish I was playing three of but I can't find space in my current list for any more copies of it uh, I let you copy any of your normal spell books in your graveyard so you get some more searches pretty much or maybe you copy something like an eternity to get back a remove from play spell book uh, running double eternity is one of the reasons I keep priestess in my deck by the way I don't really like priestess I'm sure again if you've been Keeping up with this or looked at my other decks, you know I have a huge dislike for that card. But uh, with Fade at 1, recycling cards is very important, and Priestess helps your Eternities accomplish that, as well as being an answer to cards like Thunder King and Mistake the deck has a lot of trouble with. So unfortunately, she's here to stay. Uh, then we have two Spellbook Towers. Uh, not much to say there. You're not going to lose Field Spell Wars very, very much anymore. Most other decks aren't really playing Field Spells, which is really great for us. Uh, this card is... what. A lot of what makes this deck so broken, honestly, like, we're playing with free cards a lot of the time. We get two draw phases. We get to recycle our cards, our limited cards especially, or our one-ofs at least. So this card is insane. Um, there's not really a reason to play three either, though. It's so very searchable and recyclable. And, I I mean, if they're going to MST it, like, yes, it sucks for us, but they're using their MST on this instead of defensive <laughs> cards. On that note, two Mystical Space Typhoons. A uh, card we could very easily play three of, but... With the inclusion of Upstart Goblin and Reckless Greed in my list, I didn't want to play three and brick on multiple Typhoons when I was looking for business. So I chose to stick with two of them. Then, some one-ofs. Spellbook of Fate, not much to say here. It got limited for a reason this format. One Spellbook of Wisdom, one Spellbook of Life, and one Spellbook of Power. Uh, life, fairly obvious. It kind of sucks to draw most of the time. Uh, wisdom and Power. I said the same thing last format that I'm going to say now, but they're so searchable. You can copy Power from your graveyard with Master whenever you want. You have two Eternities, Tower. You're going to get these cards back. You have World, even. Like, you're going to recycle them. You can't play two Powers in a turn from your hand anyway, and you're not going to need to Wisdom twice in a turn with how few creatures you have. Like, you're not going to need to protect two separate ones in a turn normally. That's just not going to happen. So, we stick to one of each of these. Uh... I know, like I said earlier, we're playing this card just partially because we need more spell books, but in general, it's better than playing more of, like, these cards. And playing ty more Typhoons is better than playing more Wisdoms. Life is another card that I actually hate playing, but with World, it's so insanely broken that you have to play it. 
you can just recycle your worlds, put your life back on the bottom after it dies with your tower, get world back, just keep recycling free cards. If you summon a couple worlds in the game, you're going to have a really hard time losing. Then our last spell is Book of Moon. I have not much to say about this card. Like, if only it was a spell book, right? But seriously, it's just an insane defensive card, insane offensive card. Like, it's got utility in all phases of the game. Traps, we have three Reckless Greeds. Uh, this is one of the biggest mistakes I think Konami made on this ban list. They left Reckless Greed at three. If you can get multiples of this card, like, it's one of the most broken interactions in the game. Just skipping two draw phases to draw four cards is worth. Um, in general, this lets us see more spellbooks to summon things like Priestess or find a Priestess. It lets us find spellbooks and Temperance together to do things. It lets us find our defensive cards if we're in a hard-pressed situation. It lets us come back if we get behind. Find our uh, cards to start our engine. It's just a really, really broken card, and I think it should have gone to two a while ago, honestly. Uh, three Reckless Greeds is just unhealthy, but I'm going to use it while I can. And I'd rather play this than the Stoic Engine. Um... I feel like it's really gimmicky to play Foolish Burial and Stoic in this deck. And I'm already playing uh, three traps with this card cost. I don't really want to play more to justify playing Stoic. Anyways, on the note of discard traps, we're playing two Regeki Breaks and one Divine Wrath. Uh, Regeki Breaks... Uh, playing these over Phoenix Windblast right now, I just feel like they're better in this format, especially in such an undefined format. I don't really know what I need to be killing. But I'd rather kill uh, a Temperance than put it on top of their deck, for instance. So I'm running with Regeki Break for now. Divine Wrath, uh, partially playing it because I hate my opponent's Temperances. That's really awful to have them resolve world. Uh, it stops their Veilers if they're trying to stop our Temperances. Um, I wanted another discard trap, and I just think this card's really good this format. Um, going with Effect Negation, there's one copy of Fiendish Chain in the deck. Then one Solemn Warning and one Torrential Tribute. Uh, the only defensive trap that didn't really make it into my main board here that I wanted was Bottomless Trapple, and the other one is Mirror Force, both of which are in my side deck. Um, Bottomless is pretty good against, like, half the decks that I think are good this format. Uh, same with Mirror Force. Like, they're both pretty hit or miss, so I chose to go with the most general trap lineup here. I didn't want to be playing cards that were dead in any matchup if I could avoid it, so I went with this trap lineup for this deck. Um, I didn't put it together an extra deck for you guys because, truthfully, you're not going to use much of it. Uh, but, I mean, it would contain rank 2s, rank 3s, and maybe a couple rank 4s. You can't make any in the main deck. Uh, maybe a couple rank 7s, too. You can't really make much game 1. Like, maybe you'll make a Shining Elf, a Diagnosed to Phoenix to kill your opponent. Uh, but, I mean, that's really it. Uh, you're never really going to exceed two Temperances either for anything. So, again, like, some rank twos are necessary. Uh, you can make some life plays to summon rank fours out of your sideboard using Breaker, or rank seven using Breaker to bring back Temperance to summon Priestess. Those are pretty, like, unlikely scenarios, pretty fringe plays. I wouldn't really plan on it. So, I'm not going to go over an extra deck. You throw whatever 15 cards you want in it, as long as there's Shining Elf, Gachi, and, like, Herald of Pure Light. You'll probably be good to go. Moving on, I did put together a sideboard. I have two Rivalry of Warlords, two Mirror Force, two Retort, one Curse Seal of the Forbidden Spell, one Divine Wrath, one Typhoon, one Dimensional Fissure, one Soul Drain, one Bottomless, Breaker, Apprentice Magician, and Old Vindictive Magician. I'm not sure this is the right number of Apprentice slash Old Vindictive Magician. These cards are really, really good against Evil Swarm and make it really hard to lose that matchup. Um, another thing is I'm playing Apprentice but not Magician of Faith, and I think that's the correct thing to do. Uh, Faith is really, really lackluster and a huge trap, and I think most people have figured that out by now, but I'll just put it out there if you haven't. Uh, Breaker, maybe there should be more of these. Maybe the third Regeki Break should be on the side because you need outs to uh, Mistake and Thunder King. Uh, this card can at least crash with Thunder King, and it obviously just blows Mistake up, which is obviously important. Uh, Soul Drain, Fissure, like anti mermail cards, not much to say there. Uh, these cards are mostly for the mirror match. Like, I, you need to stop their Temperances from going off, and just stopping their spells is obviously a good way to beat a deck that plays 20-some spell cards. Bottomless, just general for, like, Fire Fist and Mermails, good card. Typhoon, also in general, a good card, plus Popping Mistake, as I said. 
Beer Force, Battle Oriented decks, uh, Fire Fists, whatnot. And Rivalry is just a good deck card against a lot of decks. It stops a lot of things from going off, lets a lot of decks, or doesn't let a lot of decks cheese you, excuse me. So, I mean, it's a pretty general sideboard. There's some number tweaks that might need to happen. Uh, it's pretty much, I never like posting sideboards because I feel like they need to be tuned really for your uh, your local metagame. Because, like, I can tell you, oh, we'll side six spell trap from your cards because everyone here plays Chainburn. But if no one plays Chainburn at your local, that's stupid. Don't do that. Don't do that anyway. That's stupid in general. But for the purpose of just starting at the format, just testing a little bit, I think this is a good place to start as far as your side goes. Uh, you'll find out through playing if you have a rough time with the Evil Swarm, need more of these cards. If you're losing too much to Mistake, need more of these. Well, this or Dust Tornado. Or if you're having a hard time with something like Thunder King, even though it's one, and you need to side like Tsukiyomi or Smashing Ground, Soul Taker, some sort of removal spell for it. So... This is a good starting point. Same with the deck. You can try the other list, the uh, the Stoic variation, if you want. I personally don't like it, but to each their own, I guess. I think this is going to be better throughout the format, playing Upstart and Reckless Greed. Uh, Reckless Greed might not be needed. I think Upstart Goblin is obviously a really good card. Playing 37 cards is ideal. So when I can play it, I will, which is hilarious because I didn't play it in the Judgment deck where it was debatably way better than it is now, but... That deck was much more combo-based, and I didn't want Dead Crescents in there. Now that's much less of an issue, because you have a lot of time to play Crescent the next turn and start playing your upstarts. You're not pressed for time to go off to resolve a big turn one board like you were in that format. So, anything I've said about upstart and spellbooks in the past probably doesn't hold as much water as it would now, which is why I'm even playing it. Um... On that note, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'm going to put together Mermails, test it a little bit soon, and get a video up of that. And then hopefully we can get to some matches or some cool decks instead of just talking about defined meta decks.